It's interesting, when the Bible repeats things, we should always pay attention. In verse number 34 of Exodus chapter 28, the Bible says, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate, upon the hem of the robe round about. So it alternates these. So the robe, we see what the point of the bells was, we see what the point of the pomegranates, the symbolism of the pomegranates was, but why were they alternating all the way around his robe? Why didn't he just have one bell around his neck or something like that? Why? I mean, think about it. I mean, if the point is just to make noise, why not just give him one bell? But it was to alternate. There was to be a bell in between every single pomegranate, and God was very specific about that. Okay? So one was a warning to keep him from death. And one is a reminder of the symbol of blessing. So think about it this way, and maybe it'll be a little bit clearer. If you think about it, you know, don't, don't think about it as a, as a bell and a pomegranate and a bell and a pomegranate. Think about it this way. A blessing, a warning, a blessing, a warning, a blessing, a warning, a blessing, a warning, all the way about the, the robe of the priest. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 11. What you are seeing here with the bells in the pomegranates is you are seeing a symbol. It is a picture of all of God's covenants. It's brilliant. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 26 and verse number 28. I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. I set before you this day a pomegranate and a bell. Think about it that way. A blessing, verse 27, if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God. Does it sound familiar? As we look at the holiness of the blue, the holiness of the robe itself. A blessing, if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse, <clears throat> if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. What you are seeing with the pomegranates and the bells is a picture of the blessings and curses of God's covenants. And the blessings and curses of God's covenant to us. Like if we do these things, pomegranate. If we don't, bell. That's what we need to remember in our life. I mean, look, I mean, here, here's the thing. Turn to, it reminds me of Luke chapter 14. Turn to Luke chapter 14. Turn to Luke chapter 14. You better remember, I mean, so what do we take from this? The, the, what we take from this is this, okay? Look, pomegranates are the problem in this country today. I mean, the problem is, that's the problem with every single church in the United States of America today. This country is a dumpster fire of evil, of murder, of perversion, and every single church that you go to, it's nothing but pomegranates. That's all anybody talks about. Oh, pomegranates everywhere. But we better start paying attention to some bells. We better start hanging some bells in our lives. I mean, who would want to go to a church? I mean, how many times have you gone up to somebody's door? How many times have you, I mean, like every single time you go soul winning. And I always say this, and I, I might stop saying this, by the way, because I, I don't feel this way. I shouldn't say things that I don't feel. I always say, oh, do you go to church anywhere? And they say, yeah, I go to church at, you know, the, the bread or whatever. You know, the ceiling fan, the carpet, the door. You know, most of those are church names, actually. Maybe not the ceiling fan. But the point is, you go to church anywhere. And they're like, yeah, you know, every now and then you actually find somebody that goes to church. Shocking, but you do. So you find somebody that goes to church. You say, to you, oh, we're not trying to steal you from church. You know what, though? I am trying to steal them from their church. They're just going to some stupid church. They have no idea where they're not going to heaven. And guess what? If you don't know you're going to heaven, you're not going. They don't know if they're going to heaven. They've been going to this church for years. Years. And I mean, I'll say this a lot of times to people. I'll be like, you know, you give, especially give somebody the gospel. They get saved. And be like, you know what? Does it bother you a little bit? You've been going to, you know, the carpet for like five years and they didn't even tell you how to get to heaven. You had no idea how to go to heaven. Like your kids are running around this house. You have no idea if they're going to go to heaven. Nothing. And just, it's because it's nothing but pomegranates there. And most of them is fake pomegranates. But even if they have the right gospel, which most of them don't, even if they have the right gospel, it's just nothing but, I mean, this country is a dumpster fire. It's just a disaster. I mean, the ship is going down. And they're just like, pomegranates, pomegranates, pomegranates. That's all it is. 
and, and 90% of the people sitting in the church, I mean, that pastor doesn't care about them. All those people sitting in the church, they're all going to hell. What kind of churches are these? Now you wonder, like, how do we get to where we are in this country? That's how. That's how, because, you know, the, the men of God, they, they realized that, that it's, it's people like pomegranates better. People, people don't like when you shake a bell in their face. They, they want to eat pomegranates. That's what they want. So that's what they gave the people, and here we are. Here we are. We're drowning in a country where we celebrate murder. We literally celebrate unnatural perversion that destroys children. This is, this is, this is where we are because there's no bells. There's no bells. That's why God's like, after every pomegranate, you put a bell. After every single one. Don't you go put four pomegranates in a row before you put a bell. Because that's what that's what churches did. That's what past, that's what saved pastors did. And it must have, you know, it probably started 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. They just, ah, I'm gonna put two pomegranates. Because it's easier preaching pomegranate sermons. Nobody gets mad at you when you get up and tell people how great they are. Why don't you start seeing yourself the right way? Start focusing on the fact that you're a person of destiny. You're about to spring back up healthier, stronger, better than you were before. I believe and declare greatness is about to come out of you. Talent that you didn't know you had. Problems are about to turn around. Healing is coming. Freedom, breakthroughs, opportunities, the fullness of your destiny in Jesus' name. Nobody gets upset at anything like that, but you know what? You start bringing up sin. You start ripping people's faces off about garbage that they're involved in and things that they need to get out of their lives and things that they have to, you know, they, you know to, to get up and tell people, look, you can't have your kids in public school. There's no success there. People don't want to hear that. Because, like, that's a, that's a life-changing thing. You're going to like, you're gonna have to rearrange some stuff. You're probably going to have less money. It's probably easier to be like, oh, just pomegranates. Everything's fine. Go be a witness to everyone. Love, love, love. Have another pomegranate. God, you know, God's like put a bell in every single, after every single pomegranate. Better keep the, we better keep the bells in our life.